So today's topic really is um, is all about how to customize open space for improved operational efficiency. So um, even if you have seen open space before, you know, it's going to be kind of interesting. Um, we're really looking at, um, you know, how you can use open space to improve those kind of things uh, with regards to your uh, you know, sort of operational activities. Uh, there's actually a guest speaker on the recording, so we'll find out a little bit more about them uh, shortly. Um, but um, probably one thing to mention to, to you, Tan Chang Yu, is um, the recession, uh, session is being recorded. So we'll share the recording after the call. Obviously, it's only going to be shared with you in this instance, um, but we do upload it to our Vimeo account. So, yeah, it's going to be sort of on there and, and, and public in that sense. OK. Sure. Um, what we'll do is kind of go through the same format that we always do. So there's, you know, in the recording, there's a bit of a presentation. And then if you've got any questions that I can answer for you, then we can run through those. That's no problem. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of kind of jump in. So uh, speakers, you've you've got me today, and this is going to be a little bit confusing for you, seeing as my name in Zoom is coming up as Georgie Thomas. I am not in fact Georgie Thomas. I am Jack Earnshaw. Uh, so I'm the Customer Success Associate for the EMEA region, uh, which you know, this webinar is primarily aimed at. Um, Georgie is my colleague, so she's based over in the US and she is kind of on the recording, uh, so she's not live with us here, obviously. Um, and also on the recording, um, you'll notice there's uh, one of our product managers, so Jessica Stewart, and she kind of uh, works on a lot of the core functionalities that, um, that are available in open space as well. Okay, so particular shout out to Georgie because she ran this session um, the first time we did it in the US. So, you know, you can hear her interacting with uh, our guest speaker. Speaking of which, uh, the guest speaker is um, a chap called Kyle Snyder. He is virtual design and construction coordinator at a company called Clancy and Thays. Um, so Kyle is based over in the US as well. His participation is obviously pre-recorded. Um, Kyle's a really amazing champion at open space, uh, sorry, of open space. And uh, he's really managed to sort of push the boundaries on its use, benefit from a lot of the, uh, the sort of real operational productivity efficiency. And um, uh, you know, as, as a result of, of kind of what he's done, and that's what he's going to be sharing with us today. So um, he's going to kick the session off uh, on the recording. Uh, he kicks it off with a little bit about himself. So I'll uh, I'll let him do that and we'll kind of jump straight in and, and get started. Um, if you want to kind of ask questions, uh, Tan Chang Yu, um, pop them into the chat. We'll kind of let the recording play through. And then, uh, you know, when we get towards the end, we'll, yeah, we'll kind of answer yeah. the questions you've got. Sure. Okay. Uh, so for now, if you wouldn't mind putting yourself on mute, that would be very helpful. Sure. And um, hopefully I am going to be sharing sound uh, on my laptop. So um, what I'll do is maximize this. I'll hit the play button. If you can hear sound, um, give me a thumbs up. If not, we'll kind of look at what's going on. All right. Thank you. So um i know we probably have a broad audience so just a little bit about our company i mean we're in the southeast so we have five offices through three states and um in addition to the vdc coordinator kind of the one um the implementation and adoption leader of open space in the company so i'm kind of tasked with you know overseeing the program and, and setting up and getting our teams um, what they need. So a little bit on the left-hand side of the screen before we get going, we have been tracking a little bit some metrics along the way. So we started out in open space in 2020. And since then, we've, I mean, as you can see there, added up quite a bit. That chart in the bottom is all the different users we've had across the, uh, the time there. So in that duration, we've had 46 people take captures in open space across 34 uh, projects or sites. You can see there, I think, uh, approximate square footage we've walked 32 million and have uh, almost 13,000 minutes recorded inside open space. So that number is gradually going up and we're just building more experience with that. So I guess, Georgie, you want to flip to the next one and we can just run through the agenda for today? Absolutely. Yeah, so we'll get into each one of these bullet points uh, moving forward, but really just going to talk about some of the material and guides setting up and then more so using open space um, and some of the, the neat features there at the end. Yep. So 
me being tasked with overseeing open space for our company, um, the one thing that I've chosen to do, I guess we could go another route, but I create all the projects for our company just so I make sure there's a standard naming convention and they're, they're done, um, you know, to our, her liking and our standard. And then I can also make sure people get the appropriate uh, training before the program. We don't just let them, you know, uh, just start it on their own. So with that, we put together a little one page brochure that I distribute throughout the company and it has all relevant links and whatnot for open space. So it kind of cleans up a lot of congestion and a lot of random emails and just stuff I would um, be dealing with. So I've run through a couple of points here. One is just the information I'm looking for to create the job. Another one is we set up links here for the onboarding. And then we also provide links for the various apps um, that we require them you know, to, to pair with the camera to do the captures, what website you would go to view your captures, as well as on the bottom there, we provide links back to the additional resources that OpenSpace provides um, on their website, which they have a pretty good um, knowledge inventory there. So a lot of questions people have can really be answered by what OpenSpace is already putting together. So it kind of alleviates you know, me having to go and find that. And then lastly, we do provide additional equipment, which I will show here. And we just provide some links uh, to where they could purchase that stuff if it were to break or they need duplicate versions. Quick question, Kyle. How are you sharing this? You're sharing this, you know, via email, or do you print it out as well? Or uh, no, we have uh, like uh, we're working to develop it further, but we have kind of a directory for company operations, so it gets put in with all the other softwares and kind of like uh, company, I guess, operations uh, documents. Cool. So yeah, ideally one spot gets updated, they go to that spot. So in addition to just the camera, um, I've gone through a series of little R&D in the beginning of using, using open space and I've kind of put together select accessories that I feel um, is important and adds value to the job. So this is kind of your, when it first comes through the mail, all this chaotic mess. The next photo, you'll see it kind of unboxed and packaged up. Um, Oh, I guess you could actually flip through until all these things fill. I didn't realize it was uh, broken up. But here's what it looks like when it's all put together. Um, can you flip third? Yeah, okay. there we go. So really what we get through open space is the camera you could see on the top left there. Um, and then we just as a company policy just prefer that we use our own PPE. So we use our own hard hats um, and mount those on top of there. And then the additional stuff that I do recommend um, or I do provide to our project teams is a selfie stick, um, a little tripod mount for that stick. You know, we've been looking at some additional batteries or external batteries some stuff like that. Um, and I think, and also the, and also the case. So it's really, it gets packaged up. There's nothing loose and spread through drawers or we can get lost. It's really nice, uh, easy package that follows the project team, you know, it's stored, they can carry it on site. Um, just make sure we're taking care of our equipment. And it's, what's interesting is over on the right-hand side, um, I know they've, Open Space has gone through some development and what that hard hat mount looks like. And I think it's a really solid product right now. Um, and then also a side thing, and when these were photos were taken, it was back when it was recommended forward facing, but now it's actually turned 90 on all our walks. So there's been an evolution here in the equipment. Um, and I think, yeah, we've just been following along and uh, we have some good uh, direction where we're at now. And Kyle has also created, um, you know, he's gonna talk a little bit about benefits of you know, these different types of you know, equipment mm -hmm. in a little bit, but yeah, he's, he's done a lot of testing. So I definitely trust him and, and his different methodologies because he put a lot of time into this. And that'll lead to, Kyle, you're mm -hmm. just talking about you know, different ways to capture and different ways to view based on what are you looking to do. So um, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's fine. This is just the list of what we're going to cover. So you can kind of flip to the next one here. And so the equipment I laid out, um, these are really the different methods we have of performing captures. I mean, the two main ones are going to be on the left hand side there. So just the default, I do recommend the hard hat mount. It's just you know, you get two hands free. It's kind of the safest, safest method. Uh, you're gonna get consistent height there. Um, 
you know, and it's just, that's kind of like the default, um, the way I would go about it. Um, but we do also provide the, the selfie stick and um, there are some benefits to having that. And the interesting thing we've talked about in the past is just like some adoption rates. And for whatever reason, the hard hat mount seems to be a little scarier to people than just, you know, the, the selfie stick, as well as you don't need to have a hard hat already with that magnetic mount on it. So it's kind of like anyone can use it. As long as you have a phone, you can just pick it up and go. Um, and then what I've kind of written there is with the selfie stick, it also gets the camera off your hard hat. So we have a slide coming up here, but when you're looking downwards from the camera, you can get a full vision of what's below it, where when it's mounted on the hard hat, the hard hat's gonna block a percentage of your, your view there. So really it's depending what you're trying to capture, there's benefits to each. And then with the selfie stick, I mean, you know, you can hold it above your head, out to the side. We even have some clamps. We clamp it to some stuff and lift it up. Um, so it kind of just gets it out from your footprint if you're looking to get some captures like that. Um, the third one, that option of doing some captures is a tripod stand. And when you do the captures, you'll notice um, when you're converting video to open space, the resolution of the video is not going to be as high quality as just a photo. Um, so if you're taking standalone photos, you just get a higher resolution image, as well as, you know, you can go and stand behind an object or walk pretty far away from the camera and hit the take the photo button. So you can kind of get a, you know, kind of like a seamless photo there. So we're looking at doing that for a little bit more, you know, marketing shots or at the end of a job, some as built stuff. And on the right hand side is just, hey, with all those tools available, if there was something that came up, you could actually, um, you know, screw the one on top of the other and you could you get some pretty good coverage up there in a high ceiling or if you need to do some inspections on the exterior of the building. So I think we can uh, yeah, move over to the next one. And then here is just kind of a backup of what I was talking about there before. So sometimes if we're doing walks of like certain, uh, you know, units or, you know, uh, living units inside a building, we want to get in those tight HVAC closets. Sometimes they're the project managers and superintendents, they really want to see what the, the plumbing down there in that bottom sill looks like. Uh, yeah, in the bottom plate. So if you're doing the walk, sometimes I prefer to just have the selfie stick so you can kind of hold it out in front of you and get that downward vision where you see on the left, I mean, that hard hat's going to block, you know, that downward uh, view there. And then the next one is just kind of another example of what we can do um, with it mounted on the selfie stick. So it should be, not sure if I have lag on my end. Yeah, here you go. So we're doing some other experimental workflows here. The one on the left is we were doing an upfit actually of our office and I came through and all the ceiling tiles were popped. So I was putting the camera up there above the ceiling grid, trying to get some captures of, you know, what those conditions look like. So that opens up some workflows for that, as well as on the right hand side, um, this was actually where we're doing a wrap around an existing parking deck. So they're able to walk up, you know, the multiple stories, hang the camera out the side of the building and get almost like a downward vision on the project that's going on. As well as I've seen some people do this for um, reviewing like window flashing and whatnot on the facade. So you can hold it, you know, out the exterior of the building while you're safe inside the building and get some good captures there. You can also see Kyle's in his, in his new office now, uh, the green oh, yeah. beams beyond him and yeah, he has that. We can see the progress in open space because he, he was documenting it in open space. So it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're, you know, moving towards, okay, we have the cameras now just some different, you know, comments on walking paths. So starting on the left, um, I really just tell them that, you know, open space is very versatile. You can on the bottom, you can walk entire site plans, you know, or you can walk just a simple, you know, simple short walks in the building, you can do either or and it'll map it on the floor plan. So it's really up to you what you want to capture on a site. Um, in the middle is kind of we're talking about different stages of a project. So the top one is obviously once all the framing is going up, you're going to tend to walk more, you know, following the wall patterns down corridors and whatnot. Where in that bottom minute, 
the bottom middle image is really when we're pouring those concrete podiums and slabs to get the coverage we want, you're gonna walk more of like a lawnmower pattern, kind of covering, making sure you're, you're getting the coverage you need. So it's interesting thinking about like, as you move for, through the project and maybe you wanna look back at previous views, it's just kind of something to keep in mind um, the different patterns you're kind of gonna walk over the course of a project. And then on the right-hand side, uh, starting at the top, we're now starting to break up our walks a little bit more. Um, in the beginning, I would say we probably were just doing one continuous walk for a floor, but now how you share it or name it or find it later down the road, we're finding that there's added benefit to actually separating your walks based on how you wanna go back and analyze that data. And then the bottom right one, just kind of a funny image there, um, it was kind of brought over from someone that was used to a different workflow when we first started. But even if you wanted to, you could take standalone photos and, you know, map them all on the floor plan there. So it's kind of however you want to use the software, there's versatility there for you to do it. So does that person still just take 360 degree photos? No, we got them doing some walks. Um, now just talking about some added considerations of those walks. So when we do our onboarding, I mean, I, th I think you guys recommend like once a week is a good time period to do your walks. Um, you're really looking at the duration of the project. What are you trying to capture? Um, and we just find that a lot of people like to just stay up to speed on the project. Not so much that you're really capturing something to turn over. It's more just informing the team members. So in that case, we kind of say, yeah, once a week is a good time frame. Um, but then start thinking beyond that, the milestones. So, you know, and that kind of rolls into the naming, but the milestones we kind of look at as existing conditions. Um, then you're pretty much going to do maybe some foundation or underground utilities, some of the documenting the structural reinforcing. Obviously, when the studs go up, kind of the, the pre rough in, and then you know, there's maybe some more in there, but then you have your as-built stage. So we're trying to develop some naming conventions to really identify those milestones so we could pick them out later. Um, but we just keep that in mind as we roll into the next, um, you know, facets of this. So in the middle of the image is really talking about the captures and the way you can go back and search those captures with an open space. So unlike field notes, there's no tags or anything else with it. There's just basically your keyword search up top. And we did find out that it does search both the uh, name of the walk and the actual floor that it's mapped to, the sheet. So with this, um, what you see on the screen there isn't exactly what we've currently using, but we've gone through an evolution of uh, different kinds of naming conventions. And I'm finding that people are being very descriptive with their naming convention because it helps them go back and search it. So it'll tend to include the date, the level, um, some sort of descriptor about what they're doing. Um, and that way you can go back and keyword search it. And then on the right-hand side, some things that we kind of ran into during the adoption of this, which is kind of interesting, is we had one project where they happened to do the walk the day before the job site cleaning was supposed to take place. And our project manager did not like showing a messy job site in front of the ownership team. So it was thinking about, hey, planning your walks according to what's going on the site. And then in some future slides, we'll talk about how to share the project. And then maybe you wanna just make decision one way or another based on how you wanna share the project. And the last thing in the bottom right is They've, open space has developed the facial blurring um, throughout the time we've been using it. And that's something that really you set up at the beginning of a job for onboarding. So is it something that you want on your project or not? Uh, we have a handful that, that use it and some that don't, so. So what do we got here? Okay, so this kind of goes back to the milestones a little bit, like I was talking about. So the applications of a job, um, we pretty much, recommend that we start an open space project as soon as we get a job. And even in some cases we're doing it during pre-con, but once we set a job, we're really doing like a baseline existing conditions walk. Um, and that image you could see, we even had utilities marked out on the road and we're able to walk it and just document it, um, you know, for basically a record documentation. We're using it during construction, which I'm sure you're seeing 
you know, you've seen a number of images and kind of what this presentation's um, about. And then we're also able to use it to kind of verify some of our BIM coordination or models. Um, you can even upload some design models in there, but it's a great way to quickly just back check stuff that's being done or even to see if trades deviated, like why they would deviate or it kind of gives you like an insight into how it actually got installed there. And then also for like the final as built. So we're trying to develop some workflows and what we're doing on the conclusion of a job and then, you know, turnovers and what that final um, completed space looks like. This is fantastic. And Kyle actually put this together for um, just an internal training. Um, so does everyone, how does that work? Um, does everyone kind of come together in person or is this just like different North Carolina um, offices? Well, the training, I think they do have, people do come together and then we also host like the virtual. So it's kind of like this, but also with people in person. So it's recorded. Um, and then I just, you know, PDF the slide deck so they have it for reference. So in this slide, we're going to talk about essentially, so we did all the captures, we have it inside open space, and now it's okay. How do we share it? What are we doing with it? So just starting on the left hand side of the screen, the easiest, I guess the easiest way to share the project is you can just enable a public link, I guess a custom public link to entire project. And I guess I can back up a little bit here. I would say as far as like a, a member admin for our projects, just the way we're doing our workflows, um, I pretty much add everyone in the internal and the company that's going to be using it on their projects. They're added as members, but we don't really add too many third party people or, you know, owners or anybody like that to our projects simply because we don't do a whole lot of communication in the program and it will just become like I've seen with other programs, just added work for me on the admin side to make sure the right person's added and constantly with a revolving project team, make sure the right members are there. So we have all of pretty much everyone internally is added to the projects, but when we're looking to share it with ownership or subcontractors or anyone else in the project, we choose to use public links to do that because um, we're already doing that with you know some drawing files and some other stuff. So for us, we're looking at public links. And I guess the easiest thing you can do is just enable a public link for the entire project. Uh, but there are some drawbacks to that. Um, like we saw with, you know, if you're walking the site and it's, you know, a dirty site, uh, messy site before the trash cleanup, maybe you don't want to share those captures with the ownership. Um, or, hey, we're taking sensitive field notes in our project, maybe like, you know, safety warnings or something like that. Hey, we don't really want to share those field notes with the ownership team. Um, and that's where we've kind of, where we're at now, we kind of recommend people set up a shared folder. And then that's kind of what gets sent out to the ownership and maybe even subcontractors. And then, so typically, I mean, most times we're pushing every capture over but you can also filter the captures. So maybe we just push one a week or once a month, whatever you feel that they need to stay up to date on the project. Um, we can kind of control what they see on that end. Um, so that'd be the first thing is to start doing that for sharing with ownership and other project team members. We're also using shared folders to share like particular walks or, um, yeah, I guess I would say particular walks or, or one-off stuff. So in the top right image, you can see um, was a project we just completed and there's multifamily above and that is all retail in the bottom space. So we actually walked each retail space, uh, named it accordingly, and then pushed all those retail space walks to one shared folder. And we're able to provide a link, give that to ownership or whoever they wanted to share it with. So people could tour, you know, the potential retail space virtually on their own. And the great thing about doing this is um, if you share a public link, basically of the entire project, every time you click it, it'll open to the latest capture you did in open space. So if you want, basically you wanted them to only go back to like one point in time, you did the capture. The only other way you can do that is to share a location link, but you need to be a member to open that. 
So if you just want to share a, a public link to anyone outside the company, like that's outside the project to a specific walk, there's really no way to do that right now other than a shared folder. And so we've been, you know, looking to develop maybe this a little bit further and some other things, but we pretty much do it for like guided tours and, uh, you know, sharing particular walks. So I think I've seen some people do it of like specific units, or if they did a walk to document a particular, you know, case of something that they want to share, or maybe like, hey, we're loading all of our pre-pour concrete walks in one folder. So it's just a one-stop shop. Um, there's a lot of potential there. I think the nice thing about the link too is that it's, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. You can continue to add captures to it. And as mm -hmm. long as people have bookmarked that link or, you know, do you usually just put it in an email to the owners or, you know, how does that uh, work for you? Yeah, we have a few different things. I'm not sure exactly. Like the one thing I did in that bottom right hand corner, this is when we were doing the upfit um, for our office and we wanted to share it some people like, you know, hey, this is what the new office is going to look like. I actually do a lot of like in Bluebeam, I'll embed the hyperlink behind a photo or something. So in the top right where you see like click here for public link um, in that little square, that was like just hyperlinked in there. So we do that a lot, like just give ownerships dashboards of things and say, basically click this image and it'll take you to it. Um, but yeah, or it's in an email, but it'll be in a document typically somewhere. see we had a, a question come in i know we're going to do this at the end but um i think it's okay to, to go through if, this one if now. it's relevant yeah yeah so are you able to choose your project naming id for custom link for example using a job number or name in the custom link now i believe um so if you go i mean it doesn't matter if you go back or not but i believe i've tested this out and the name i think it went forward another Oops. slide if the name of the shared folder, I don't believe when the people click it, they see that. That's just for your internal organization. I think when they click the shared link, they still see the name of the project. And I could be mistaken, but I believe that's how it works. Yes, that is correct. So, and those shared folders, how you see their name there. So if they click it, they actually just see the name of the project. So I guess you would need to put some descriptor when you send the link of, of what it's to. But that is a good question. We are, I was wondering that as I was putting it together. All right, so now we're gonna talk about some techniques. Um, we'll start with this one. Yeah, so this is the fun graphics, right? So we talked a little bit about, um, well, I guess I didn't really, I don't have a slide for it, but in the agenda, we talked about how you go to the captures, whether it's through the images or the sheets, you know, looking through the captures one by one. So this is kind of a, a video just showing how we can use field notes to do documentation on the site. And one of the benefits of doing this, obviously it gets pinned to the floor plan, which I mean, just alleviates a lot of extra work. But also when you notice, you scroll into that image, um, you can get a high resolution photo of the particular place you're looking at. So, you know, the 360 capture is gonna be pretty low resolution just based on the camera. But when you're pinning these photos to it, it's just adding a level of, uh, you know, like added value there um, and particular things you want to you want to note. But with that, we also have the ability to add some tags here. So in this one, I didn't quite add it yet, but we're looking at developing custom tags. So one of the custom tags would be for documentation. So if this was like, um, you know, pre pre pour QC or something like that, we'd have a custom tag. And then when you open up all your field notes, you could filter based on you know, that particular pre poor item you wanted, you could go to a whole list and then you can come back and find it at a later point in time. Do I have another video of that? Um, but the other thing is we we're talking about with Georgie was how do you go back and view all your captures? And one other thing that we're using field notes for is actually navigating the, uh, the open space, I guess, project that we have. So I go through and actually make custom tags, one for like BIM coordination. And then there are specific items that we talked about, like a uh, you know electrical feeder is getting installed or something like that. I'll just throw a field note on it, um, so I can always just open up the field notes pane, um, which I think it'll show here in the video. And then as you're scrolling, you can click that little globe icon and it'll jump you right to that field note. 
So if that field note was, you know, three months ago on a different level, you just click that one circle button, that globe, and it'll jump you right to that view. So for me, I find field notes almost like more valuable just for navigating the project. And we're trying to expand what those tags look like. Um, but currently, you can only do tags per project. I can't set a master tag for our entire company project list and push it out. Um, but I'm sure that'll be coming somewhere in the future. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility there with creating your custom tags and how you can apply them. So that's something that we're looking to do a little bit more here in the future. And I know, Georgie, one thing you guys have pushed a little bit, another benefit, um, is you can print a field report. So that's a nice thing as well. If um, you can kind of see there, I kind of mashed together two images, but it, on the right middle of the screen, that's that's like a field report right there of all those squares. And what's nice is you can kind of get like a running PDF list and you can click those and it can give you a link right back to open space. So it's really convenient. Um, and then I think we're going to talk about here a little bit about the model viewer. So this is one thing that I really enjoy of open space is being able to link, you know, the entire coordination model with the captures. And then as you move within the open space captures, the model follows along with you. Um, if you try to move around in the model side, the model will move, but it won't follow with the capture, um, which has its pros and cons. But but it's nice because you can just navigate through the actual photos and the model will follow. So some people that aren't too advanced or adept at navigating a model, they don't really have to touch the model viewer side over there. You can just use the captures. And in this one, I think I'm clicking around, you can actually jump between levels and the model viewer stays split screen right there, just follows along. So now we're jumping down you know, into the, the lobby of our building here. Um, you know, back check in here, some electrical risers. And on the model side, there are, I don't have show it in this video, but along the bottom in that forge viewer, you can see all those different settings. So there's some where you can open up the layers, the different models in there, and you can turn things on and off. So if I'm reviewing like overhead ceiling stuff, typically I go in there and I turn off ceilings and I turn off some other things um, to help with the view. And then this one's showing you can even, you know, walk the surrounding site. So we walk some sidewalks to get some perspective of the building. I think they were curious about, you know, you can see the skin to be installed, kind of follow along uh, the progress of that. I know they've been doing a series of walks around the perimeter of the building pretty frequently. And then this one, I was out here getting some marketing graphics, but this we had a topping out of the, the structure. So I was out here just with the camera getting some open space walk. So there's that, uh, you know, concrete bucket coming in here for the, the last slab. And then it's actually over on the left. Uh, that's one of our senior superintendents who actually came out of retirement to uh, help on this project. So I was over there uh, showing him some of the latest tech. And, and he was commenting about, uh, I forget what exactly he said, something about like, uh, how far the tech has come since he first started. So he had some funny comments there. So cool. <laughs> but, I mean, you could see right in there how easy it is just to jump around. Hey, we're you know in the middle of the building. Now we're down the sidewalk. Now we're up on top of the roof. I mean, you can just drop down the different floors and jump around, um, which is convenient having it you know all in one spot. And then I think, oh yeah. So the next thing we're also looking at doing is, what does this look like out in the field? So we're trying to recommend certain things. This video here is actually in the app. There is, a, I forget what you guys call it. It's called reveal like X-ray, so reveal mode, mm -hmm. where you can switch back and forth between a capture and your live camera. So I think I screen recorded this. And every time I, sh I show this in a presentation, people seem to be pretty impressed with it. Uh, it's just kind of like one of those, you know, wow features. But it, it kind of drives home the point of getting the captures and then how you're actually using it in real time. So it's something that we're looking to develop a little bit further, um, how to access this in the field. And I we didn't really talk about this previously, but I did have someone ask me about it on an iPad. And just for the record, you all do recommend people use the browser on an iPad to view the captures, correct? Not the, the app for for recording the captures 
We do, or putting it in landscape mode. Would you say that's that's correct, Jess? But yeah, it's not compatible I, with like iPhones or smaller surfaces, you know? Yeah, but um, that's that's true. But you can also use the mobile app in a tablet to view captures. If you click view site in the mobile app, it basically just takes you to a different version of the browser. But a lot of our, our teams um, use the app. For the BIM viewer particular. In particular. Oh, for the BIM viewer particularly? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we recommend the browser to so catch that. Yeah, so it's a little bit of like look ahead for us of we're doing a lot of captures, a lot of them in the back end, but now we're kind of looking at, okay, how is this affecting and impacting the teams out on the sites? So, you know, we'll probably be developing some recommendations on, you know, different apps to view it on, tips and tricks for viewing it on the desktop versus the mobile. I'm sure there's some little, you know, quirks in there. And then also getting the model out there in the field. Um, I know there's been some some talks about that works really great on the computer, um, but with, you know, the cell connection, I haven't really tested it out too much, but what does that BIM viewer look like in the field? So that's kind of some things that we're, we're looking at here in the near future, um, but just wanted to provide some, some interesting graphics here at the end of what you can showcase with your projects. Yeah, this is incredible, Kyle. Um, I know that another question came in. We're about, we're, at that time to, to actually cover questions. Um, but yeah, it's I, good I, timing. That was the last slide. That was perfect. So I'm going to stop and pause things just there, guys, because um, I know that I'm uh, looking at time. We've got about 15 minutes left, and I want to give you guys the opportunity to ask your own questions rather than listen to the questions that were um, asked on the original session. Uh, by all means, we can kind of play through those if, if you guys don't have any of your own, but I uh, want to give you guys the opportunity. Um, there are uh, three of you uh, currently dialed in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do um, is make you all panelists. So that will allow you to turn on your video and your microphone. It won't do that by default. So, you know, don't worry. We're not about to sort of uh, flash you up uh, on screen immediately. Um, but what it will allow you to do is unmute yourself to ask a question if if you have one, if you like, um, and also to turn your camera on if you'd like to do that as well. So it'll take a couple of seconds just to drop you all in as panelists. Maria, that's that's you in there now. Tan Chang Yu, you're back as a panelist as well. Uh, Veronica. It should be uh, it should be bringing you up soon as well. There we go. So um, over to you guys. Do you have any questions? Any comments? How was that? Yeah, uh, I do have uh, some questions. So I think the first one is uh, um, does Open Space actually have a master account or something? So to actually uh, control all projects. So uh, this uh, master account shouldn't have this uh, uh, restriction of, of time. Now. So uh, it's like a, a corporate account that actually control all the projects. Um, do you mean, Tan Chang, you are a kind of a, a central sort of admin console to control? Uh, yes, so uh, the, we can access the project even if the project is uh, uh, actually overdue. Uh, not overdue, I mean it's completed. Yeah, uh, okay. we actually need. Yeah, we actually need uh, to set up the project before the project even started. So, uh, we might need uh, before pre bidding starts in there. We actually need to set up and go site to take some photo before we actually really purchase the the software itself. So we most most probably when we purchase the software is when the project is going to start and then we purchase the software something like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me let me load up um a sort of a, a demo project here, guys. Uh, we've got a couple of them. I'll show you um, after where we do that sort of thing. So hopefully, if I've understood your question correctly, Tan Chang Yu, um, yes, you have um, the ability. I actually dropped into the wrong one there. There we go. There you go. Um, the ability to add projects, but not actually sort of add them as, as good to go. So when you add a project, you can kind of step through these steps um, and as you're stepping through, you'll be able to save that until you hit publish, that project is not going to be sort of live and accessible. And what it will do is drop it in 
uh, this draft section over here. And you can see that there's a couple of other sections that are applicable as well. So generally, when a project is, is finished, people will mark those projects as complete, which means that you can't sort of add any more captures to them. People can still access it and navigate the images, however. And uh, sort of one step on from that is archiving, which actually kind of uh, tucks it away, means that um, it kind of reduces the access uh, and sort of sits it in there once, that, once you get to that stage. Does that answer your question? Um, sort of, uh, but uh, is it possible that we actually uh, uh, actually take photos something that before we actually purchase? Yeah. To take photos before what? Sorry. Yeah, uh, let's say we create a project, something this and that, before we actually uh, really uh, purchase uh, the software for that project. Oh, I yeah. see. A kind of like a pilot or a, or a demo. Yeah, it's only for one, one master account, which is a, a more corporate business. La. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'll do, Tan Chang Yu, is um, I'll grab your details. Uh, if you want to put your email address in, in the chat for me, um, and I can take this offline. I can put you in contact with who you need to be. And uh, yeah, what we'll probably do is set you up with um, uh, OS Basic, which is a, a new thing for us. It's the first free video capture solution out there. There's a couple of limitations with it, but it's aimed at getting you guys um, onto the system and, and kind of experiencing it before you sort of purchase, if that makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Then uh, one more thing is... Uh... The project itself, uh, can you just go to the project uh, where you add a project? So could you add a tab uh, on uh, like a project description or something that, that we can actually uh, write something about the project? Yeah. Uh, a project description? So yeah. not necessarily. Um, you know, in project settings, you can add your own project name and you can perhaps put um, something in there. Um, there's not really any section that sort of lets you add a description yeah. for the project. Um, I just thought you would be useful uh, because often I, I felt that uh, we couldn't actually write something that actually uh, this, uh, more detail on that project itself uh, because it's just start with the address everything and uh, nothing else, just a project name. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's a good idea. I, I like it. Give people a little bit more context about what the project is. Yeah, right. I could certainly feed that one through to our product team. Then uh, also, uh, uh, when the project actually uh, uh, completed and expired, uh, is it a, a possibility that we can actually uh, export the whole project out in a form of PDF, something like that, that we should, uh, they can extract? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, in, in addition to the, you know, the options that we mentioned earlier, kind of completing or archiving, which keeps it in your organization, we do allow you guys to request an offline deliverable. And that is basically an, a HTML format um, file. Um, it is a very similar experience, I would say, to actually navigating your images in the system. It's not just a, an export of a bunch of folders with a bunch of photos that you can't really navigate. You are still mm -hmm. able to kind of pick a date and, and sort of look around the images as, as yeah, you want. Yeah, you need most of the Google, Google Chrome. HTML is yeah. to link together. Exactly. And we hold your project data for 10 years after uh, after your project completion anyway. So you've got some time on there too. Okay. Fantastic questions, Tang Cheng Yu. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Veronica, Maria, I want to give you guys a chance as well. Uh, any questions from you guys? Um, no, not thank you for me. Not for you, Veronica. Well, thank you for dialing in. Uh, Maria, uh, if you've got any, by all means, unmute, let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, don't feel like you have to if, if you're pretty happy. Uh, I'm perfect. Thank you for the presentation. Excellent. Lovely. Uh, uh, can I ask a few more questions? Of course you can, Tang Chen Yu. Yeah. yeah, so um, because I use other others before. La, so uh, one thing that I just stand up for open space is the model linkage with the site photo. So, uh, because I understand that we are not the one who link this uh, uh, to synchronize this two view, right? So, open space will do the synchronization for us. That's correct. And yeah. it's done by level per level stuff, isn't that? Is it done in that way? Yeah. So specifically, the um, the model alignment itself that is something that we do for you. Um, it's part of the cost of uh, of open space. Um, and generally, the way that works is um, you guys upload your model to the system that automatically generates a ticket on our side and we align your model to your captures. And that's what we do. 
yeah, uh, and, and uh, when I when we the construction site, I actually provide the, the mapping with the orientation of the view you are looking at every time. So uh, every time when you take a video walk, stuff like this and that, uh, how does it actually really synchronize this thing? Now? So is there a probability that that uh, the uploading will have an error that the orientation is misaligned? Uh, no. So th th again, another good question. What we actually do is align um, your BIM model to your sheets more than we actually do your captures. And that means that as you capture more and more, um, it's not going to kind of knock that alignment out of place. Once the alignment is done, it's done. Everything else follows on from that. Um, of course, there's a little bit of tolerance. It's not an exact science matching reality with, with a model. Um, but you'll see that, uh, you know, as you saw in the videos and as I'm showing you here on screen, uh, you can get pretty, pretty close. Yeah, because uh, I realize, okay, uh, sometimes we don't walk in uh, one direction, something like that. video walk, we do video walks. Uh, the first time we take the video walk, we walk in a different sequence. Second time we do a different sequence. Third time we do a different sequence. So struck, uh, uh, this uh, open space, um, he will actually try to pick the nearest photo to the nearest photo to do the comparison. Is that the case? Yeah, so um, with open space, you don't have to walk the same path every time. Um, part of what the AI is doing, it's using a bunch of data we get from the camera. So things like inertial data, GPS data, if you're kind of outside. Um, a lot of it is to do with the machine vision that the AI um, is using as well. Uh, so it actually kind of recognizes um, things in those images that are being taken. And all of that combined is how we accurately, um, how the AI accurately maps your uh, your images to your plans. So um, you don't have to walk at the same path every time. Um, it's going to take care of that. It's going to handle that. Um, a related question, I guess, is that we get a lot is, you know, do I have to uh, pause or stop my capture if, if I have to stop and stand in, in place for a period of time? You know, I'm mid video capture and somebody comes over and starts talking to me. Do I have to pause? No. Now there are benefits to walking the same path um, each and every time. Uh, and namely, that would be our split view. So I'm not sure if, if Kyle actually showed this on the video, but the split view allows you to compare to completely separate dates side by side. Um, and again, those are sort of synchronized and it gives you that lovely um, comparison between the two. Yes. Now, the closer those two walking paths are on those different dates, the better that split view is going to line up. But it's certainly not a requirement that you do walk the same path. Yeah, so in cases that uh, they actually couldn't find uh, two near photos, so you wouldn't have the split view, right? Yeah. Is that the case? Uh, just repeat that again. Uh, uh, in any case, if when your walk path doesn't uh, cross path or when I mean, uh, when it's near, la, when uh, your two walk views uh, they don't, they never cover the, the same area, la, you wouldn't be able to create a street view, is it? If you, if you hadn't walked anywhere near um, on those two different dates, then yeah, the split view is not really going to line up. Um, if you don't have the data, we can't present it. In, in, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it's and it's one of those things that maybe confuses people a little bit when, when they first sort of start using the system, is that... Um, it really does give you this feeling that you can walk anywhere. So because these are 360 degree images and we kind of place you in the middle, it kind of feels like you should be able to walk anywhere you can see. But actually, you've still only walked, uh, as highlighted by this green line here, a specific path. So on this particular level, 48, on this particular day, May 1st, we didn't walk anywhere in the sort of middle of this section here. Uh, so I can't actually get to that point because we don't have any photos. But if I click on there, it'll tell me where the nearest set of images are in terms of when we last captured that area. And I can jump straight to that point as well. So we make it really nice and easy for you to navigate around like that. Okay. okay. Um, and one of the things that Kyle touched on was, you know, kind of make sure you're you're walking everywhere that you want to walk. You'll notice some of his walking tracks were sort of very close together. Uh, you know, it's like he was kind of going backwards and forwards as he as he moved through the project. That's kind of why, because you end up getting a, you know, a, a lot better coverage in terms of the images that you've taken. 
Um, and yeah, if you ever need to go back, you're kind of uh, certain that you're going to have some photos of what you want to look at. And uh, one, one more thing is the, the camera or the hard hat. Mm -hmm. I saw the, uh, you're using Insta360 because it's actually look very different from mine. So I'm using Insta360. Yeah, we support the Insta360 cameras. So that's the, the X, um, the and our, Enterprise, the X2. We also now support the Ricoh Theta Z1 for video capture. We've supported it for photo capture for a while. Um, one of the biggest benefits of the Z1 um, is that it has a larger sensor. So a um, little bit better image quality, um, but a lot better image quality in low, um, low light environments. Yeah, so uh, no problem on fixing uh, Insta 360R, right? Not at all, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you uh, if you do kind of uh, jump in um, and have a look, um, Tan Chang Yu, then uh, yeah, as long as you've got a camera, we can send you the, um, uh, it's probably blurring it out a little bit there, but the mount that you need, which has a sort of magnet on the bottom. And then uh, we simply send you um, a, a washer and a sticky dot as well. So that kind of attaches to your, your hard hat and then on it goes. Okay. Because my camera looks very different from yours. Huh? My camera is a uh, Insta360 R. Is, your, um, um, is yours a little bit like this one? So it's kind the of one that can uh, assemble. Yeah, yeah, correct. This one, um, yes. Yeah, so fully supported as well. That's absolutely fine. Okay, I think that's good. All right, we've uh, we've hit one o'clock there, guys. I, I can push a little bit further if, if we want to. So um, uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, if uh, if you don't have any more questions, we'll we'll kind of bring things to a close, and we'll thank you for dialing in. Uh, is that okay for everybody? Yeah. Perfect. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Lovely stuff. All right. Uh, well, thank you once again, guys. Let me go ahead and uh, and stop that screen share. And I'll go ahead and uh, end the webinar. Um, thanks for dialing in and have a fantastic day.